All right, for anyone not already in the agenda notes, here is the link in the Zoom chat. You can go ahead and share screen. And with that, if everyone can go ahead and pull up the agenda notes and lock their attendance while the last few join. Be sure and add anything that's on your mind, anything that maybe needs a call out or some extra attention to agenda notes or open floor. As always, pull requests and bug scrubs and mailing list reviews are coming up. So if there are any conversations, PRs, or bugs that need some extra attention, drop those down below and we will get to that. And just double checking, can everyone hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you, thank you. <laughs> All right. All right, um, well, agenda items and attendants are being logged. If there's anyone new on the call today, I would love to encourage you to speak up and introduce yourself. Um, we would all like to welcome you and hear what brings you into the Kubefort call today. Oh, hi, I'm Peter. It's my first time on this community meeting. Uh, I work at an NVIDIA, uh, probably you know Ryan, but Probably we plan to uh, be more involved in the community, so that's why I'm here. Hi, Peter. Welcome. Thank you for joining. So I was here last week, but I'll, I'll introduce myself because I think you were out. Um, I'm Larry Dewey. I work at AMD. Um, also looking to be more involved in the community and was also on last week to talk about hardware enablement. So. Awesome. Yeah, I missed last week. Um, Andrew, thank you for filling in for me. Actually, that reminds me, I need to put, um, I need coverage for the, for September 28th. All right, and with that, it doesn't look like we are getting a whole lot on the agenda today. So definitely be bold if you were debating about anything. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up mailing list items. Let's see, we're looking at feature gates. Currently a workaround.
So yeah, I, this may uh, be something we would benefit from a little verbal discussion on. Um, I don't want to dive in the weeds of, <laughs> of the technical why, but just uh, this has been a situation where we've been taking a least common denominator approach uh, in order to be able to accommodate Docker, uh, but we're going to try and transition to a more secure stance by default. And so as a part of that, this is basically just a heads up to the community that if you're using Docker and you're using SE Linux, you need to enable this feature gate. Got it. Do we have that um, adjusted in documents anyway? Uh, Jed, uh, do you your mic work? Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Um, so yeah, what's what's the question? Is there any documentation for FutureGate? Yes. Um, and I no, I didn't really. Like but yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I should probably write something. It's good. Second. All right. Any other Q&A on that one? Moving on. All right, let's see. This came in yesterday. Oh, yeah, ha, releases. Look at that. So I'm going to look at The change log since our agenda is light today. Usually we don't get to do that. Any favorites from anyone today? Ooh, deprecating SRIOV live migration. That's fun release. Thanks all. And let's see. The um, the follow up to that was uh, Fabian put out a request for volunteers for um, anyone able to help out with a like a release email. Got it. Um. That would probably also coincide with publishing uh, Twitter release emails or uh, posts and things like that as well. Could be. I think and it'll be... That we did that in earlier days and I don't know why it got lost somehow, but I guess that people don't have time to do that. <laughs> it might be simple. Simply the only answer that I have to that. Well, we had some turnover on the team as well. So I, I don't know if some of that got lost when I joined in to backfill or. I think this is a. It would be really nice to have a checklist uh, that, you know, whoever is handling a release, you know, as a volunteer or as one of the kind of principal people coming back in to, to help. Uh, and I also would like to add to that checklist the um, update of the website 
where we have the uh, release notes kind of auto-generated by a script. Um, I know that Go Releaser has a lot of options for how to build all that out, but I don't know what's currently in use and if it has equivalent feature set. Like Go Releaser, Releaser can, I think it has an email interface. I know it has a, like social media interfaces. I think the main problem about that is that uh, currently releases are done manually. I think most of the time, ah. like you, like you see here, David Vossel created the release. Um, we are using a custom made uh, release tool. And I guess that uh, since, since we haven't completely automated the release, I guess um, that, that uh, the rest of the stuff would either need to get incorporated into that release tool that is um, uh, based in uh, project infra repository inside the Qfit uh, org. Um, we, might, we might add something there, but then we would need to create a Qubit bot account for, um, for Twitter. And I think there is one, but I don't know who owns that. And maybe even just create a, an email, something like that. But yeah, I, I guess that is just an open task that someone needs to pick up somehow. So it sounds like the, I mean, between handling release media and um, adjusting the release cycle, slowing down the release cycle should at least improve some of that. Um, and then automating yeah. the release. Like there's a lot to do just with release stuff, isn't there? Yeah, actually, actually, I think you're totally right there. Yeah, so maybe maybe my first first guess would be that we might first wait until this agreement on the slowdown of the release process, or uh, I would I would like to put it as as Vine did it. So like like we want to follow the Qubit release in some way. Um, if that has settled then finally, then then I guess we might pick up again the uh, improvement of the automation of the release somehow. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. I like that. I, I also think um, in the interim uh, channels, I did about having a checklist to cover those bases um, is good, both for now, but it'll also help inform that um, how we automate it. Is there a specific um, project that we want to model after? Like, and just as an example to cover any release artifacts that we might be missing, like tweets and emails, or that, that way we can actually start practicing the checklist and convert that into automation issues going forward. So I, I'm not quite sure if I got that. Sorry for that, but I guess I guess that what what I understood from this is um, that we're thinking about um, paving a path somehow for automating all this, and I think that's that's a good idea to do that. And uh, and I think this uh, this has been overdue for a long time now. So, but still, I would prefer probably to to just wait until the um, release streaming alignment somehow <laughs> i don't know how to call it as uh, how to call it um and has settled and, and then we we might pick this up again so yeah i'm all for for um, automating the release i'd say that this would be very beneficial and i think that in the process when we have 
settled on this uh, release streamlining that we might still all, or also need to adjust a little bit on how the release is done because from my understanding from the document the cut off a release candidate doesn't mean automatically creating another release branch but just a release tag if i understand correctly and the release branch is only cut when the uh, third release candidate is um, is picked somehow but i might be wrong on that Sorry for my mumbling here. I, this was just no, like... you're fine. Um, I, I was waiting to see if anyone else had anything else to say. I think um, that you're right as far as handling the conversation around the new release cadence is a good plan. Um, Andrew Burton, I think you said you, you wrote um, creating the checklist. I think that's great just as a practice between now and then so that we can identify uh, what kinds of things we might want to add as features to the automation when we're ready for that discussion. Um, and we can start practicing cleaning up loose ends for that. So it, it looks like everything is comfortable in, tan in parallel for now. Right. And, and like I said, uh, so that we don't forget it, I guess that we need to uh, find out who uh, made uh, who owns this uh, Twitter Cupid bot or Cupid um, Twitter account somehow. I, I don't know who owns it, so maybe someone can tell oh, me. Oh, I can that. answer that. Um, oh. The uh, we do now. Um, it's been passed over to uh, the Cupid um, CNCF account. Oh, okay, nice. So that is now something that we um, we can get back onto. Awesome. That'll be fun. Um, also, just I guess while we're while we're talking about um, these changes with the release cadence, it, I I don't know for a fact, but um, it we may need to look at how we automate um, the release notes because if we're releasing three times in a year, then our release notes are going to become uh, relatively large, I imagine, and we may need to put some system of ordering them um, so they're more like easy to, to go through. I think we have um, recently completed somehow the addition of, I guess, the release notes to the user guide, right? Or do I do I remember that incorrectly? At the moment, I'm um, I'm creating a PR every after each release using that script. Uh, we we do oh. have a an issue that I think went stale today, um, uh, quite timely, in the project infra repo about how we could incorporate that script running with the release. Um, but if we do have an impending change to our release cycle, then maybe it just makes sense for us to continue um, manually updating the release notes in the user guide. And we look at how how the release note automation will change um, mm -hmm. with our release cycle change. So, but yeah, still if I understand correctly, I guess that the um, release notes are attached to every release candidate somehow, and the second release candidate might have additional features than, uh, uh, than that the first has. So maybe it's even okay to, to just um, point to every release candidate and have the release notes there? Or do you think that we should combine um, the release notes into one big pile of release notes that, that span all the release candidates' uh, attachments? Uh, off the top of my head, I would say that each release candidate um, would get its own release notes. But when we do a, a major release, we would also want to then put them all together. Um, mm -hmm. Certainly anyone that's going through um, just our I don't know what we call it, like why, why stream releases. 
um, would want to see all the release notes that make up that that release that those four months. I presume. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay, sounds like a conversation that we will continue. All right. And then definitely don't miss uh, chiming in on the release cadence if you have any opinions on that or questions. And I'm going back through agenda. And so far in a first, my outage needing coverage is the only thing that is on the agenda. So um, if anyone can volunteer for that this week, that's great. I will be here hosting it next week. And I will call for a volunteer again next week. Um, the week after that, I will be in San Francisco for some work stuff. So, And okay. just to let you know, I, I did manage to go through the um, pull request of the mailing list. I did not have time to do the bug grub, and I think there are a number of um, bugs okay. that haven't I had any I can jump through that. Let's take a look. I was just assuming you were... Amazing as always there, Andrew. Let's down this week. All right, let's see what we got. Oof, that's a special one. Let's see. I think this needs more information. So not even what, what the client is. Um, at least we have the client version and server version, but yeah. Um, I, I mean, I guess the... Mm, at least the VM YAML should be posted here, I guess. Yeah. Sorry, that warning is is just an informative message that says basically that uh, the client version that uh, he is using is different from from server one, and uh, it appears only if there there is an error, and the error is error starting virtual machine. So uh, yeah, probably we need some YAML and something else. Besides that, you can also give him the hint that uh, he might update the client version. Um, I guess it looks like he is using the crew version of the vertical plugin. So I think he might need to kubectl crew update vert, something like that. I think that 
maybe he was just not aware of life migration somehow. Well, I'm looking at the assumptions in, I mean, it almost seems like he's using a host path storage provider, but usually the host path type storage providers will complain if it tries starting on a different node. So I'm really confused by this whole premise. I, I think I think at least uh, we, we need some more information what exactly he's using and how he's uh, he's he's configured his virtual machine. So like I, I think I think I would ask for the VM YAML and so that we have more information on, on what um, what storage options he's using, for example. And yeah. Yeah, without knowing a whole lot of what's going on, it sounds like they didn't set up persistent storage between nodes. So I'm um, actually, yeah, it could just be a um, like the container disk ephemeral VM. Um, that might be something we should do. Is do we have issue templates? Mm. Weird. I think this is normally automatically somehow selected. So I guess you maybe just erased everything and just wrote erased that in. everything. Yeah. Okay. Um... And yeah, that's that's a good point, by the way, that we could probably always point to the issue template and um, maybe just fill out all the information that is provided there so that we can help him better. What is this browser thing we speak of? There are a few web browsers that actually support VNC connections directly through the browser, um, specifying the port. That might be what they're talking about. How cool is that? I didn't even know. OK, I am going to let this one. it because it looks like people are having a conversation <sighs> yeah that's mine um i think i have discovered a bug in life migration but i'm still waiting for answers on that doing fantastical things as always all right, let's see. Okay, let's maintain. 
container. Okay, I think we can close that one. Is there a proud command for closing? I think you can just slash close it. Sweet. What is starvation? Feels like they were thorough in troubleshooting, but we're short on information. Um, I guess then I'm missing anything. I think that should at least help. This is going to be beyond me. Does anyone have insight or want to review this one?
I guess uh, resource limits aren't being applied to pops. What version are they running? Um, so that was dot five four. Does anyone know if there would be any difference in resource limit constraints being applied correctly in other versions? noted this one on the meeting notes. I can't move forward on that one on my own. See what we have here. DPDK setup. So the webhook timeout. Looks like with API port is down. TLS handshake errors. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Maybe there might be something wrong with the whole Qubit installation. Somehow maybe yeah. get pod status or something would help after installation uh, when the all pod would be ready somehow. Um, and also, I think uh, also the DC is trying to apply VM spec, but that is also missing. So maybe you might also um, yeah, attach spec? that. The, the VM spec is missing. Uh, He's okay. talking about applying the VM spec, but he doesn't post it here. So I guess this might also help in, uh, in, in clearing what the issue is. I'm curious. I know you can't see this other window that I have open. I'm looking at the very API logs real quick.
So this appears to be... Looks like uh, the there is issue. I think I know where is the issue. Um, I don't know how he deployed the Kubernetes itself, but there might be a problem with verification of certificate of kubelet. So it can't read the uh, logs from the pods deployed on the node. And can communicate probably. Not sure about that. I can ask for the VM YAML, but I'm not thinking that that one's going to be relevant. Maintainer issue. Needs to check the log of the launcher, yeah. Looks like LHJ and others are helping on this one. So I'm not going to spend the community meeting cycles on that. And it looks like that gets us through the new issues. Thank you all for help with those. All right, and with that, I don't see anything else added last minute to the agenda. So if there is nothing else, going once, going twice, then... Actually, sorry. Yes, go um, ahead, please. One quick thing. Uh, I have noticed uh, some issues coming up in the kubevert.github.io website repository that seem to be more like kubevert questions. And we don't really have a way that we're bringing that, those into light. And so I think one thing I'd like to do is probably go through those uh, kind of manually this time and, and say, hey, this works better if you raise this issue in Kubert Kubert, and then look at the uh, uh, issue template and add some verbiage to the issue template that says this is for the website only. We might update the template here to point non-website related issues to the kubevert repo. Yeah, that would be great. So saying to take it. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. So, so uh, Kat, you're suggesting probably that uh, we should just update the bug report template so that the first line would say this form is for bug reports and feature requests for the Qubit website only, right? Something like that? Yes. Yeah, that makes total sense. 
Makes total sense. But yeah, Chandler, I guess we, we need to, I, I don't know of any um, automation that would probably transfer issue from one repository to the other. Right. No, I don't yeah, think I think so. it's more of a, an inconvenience to the uh, poster to the issue. Mm -hmm. I just, sorry, this is not going to get attention here. Just yeah. copy paste it. Yes. So you can go ahead and assign that to me. I'll admit that I just didn't know where to look for the templates. Now I'm seeing pretty, it seems pretty easy. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome, good call out. Um, in that case, uh, anything else? And I'm going to do my countdown again. Going once, going twice. And that is a wrap for this week. I will see you all same time, same place next week. And please don't forget, for anyone who would be willing to volunteer, the 28th will need coverage because I won't be here for that. So have a great rest of your day. Thanks, great. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Kat. See you. Bye.